Chapter 2 Milo had two cream-stuffed twinkles and a glass of milk and went to his room to get his homework out of the way. It took him longer than usual because his mind kept drifting to Dr. Silverfish's book. Milo kept imagining what it would be like to be a perfect person. He'd be able to do anything he wanted to and do it right the first time. He would be able to throw out all his erasers. He could correct his teachers in front of the class and never be wrong. He'd get perfect scores on all his tests. Hmm. Would you guys like that? Or do you think it's okay to make mistakes? Best of all, nobody would ever have anything to scold him about. It sounded, well, perfect. He decided he'd read Dr. Silverfish's instructions right after dinner. Of course, he was far from perfect yet. At dinner, his father told him not to serve his soup. His mother told him to quit eating so fast, and his sister told him to put his feet on his own side of the table. Milo couldn't stand it. I bet you'd love me if I turned perfect, he said. I think that's a silly thing to say, don't you? I'm not perfect and my family loves me, and nobody in my family is perfect and I love them. And I know that's the same for all of you. He's a little confused, isn't he? His mother chuckled. Not much, chan not much chance of that, is there? I'd settle for okay, said his father. Nobody's perfect, especially Milo last laughed Elisa. They're teasing him, aren't they? I'll show them, Milo thought. Just three more days. And he gave his sister a kick under the table. There was no sense in being perfect until he had to be. Oh, dear. After dinner, Milo went upstairs, sat down at his desk, and picked up a copy of Be a Perfect Person. Even with a clown nose, Milo decided Dr. K. Pinkerton Silverfish looked ex extremely intelligent. Milo began wondering what the K stood for. Carefully, so he couldn't possibly stumble on anything he wasn't supposed to read yet, he opened the book to the inside back cover and found Dr. Silverfish's biography on the jacket flap. Is Dr. K. Pinkerton Silverfish the world's leading authority on perfection? You bet your booties, Grandma! He is also Thompson's, Thompson Seedless Professor of Enology at the Ripple campus of Skid Row College. He holds degrees from Fahrenheit University and Centigrade, Uni in and Centigrade Institute, but when his arms get tired, he puts them down. As a hobby, Dr. Silverfish raises Venus flytraps. He also holds the world's second largest collection of unusual toothpicks. Milo closed the book. His question remained unanswered, but he felt ready to begin. He took a very serious deep breath and opened the book to where he'd left off at the library. Day one. You can't take the last step to for perfection until you take the first. I know what you're thinking again. You're wondering what the K in my name stands for. Well, I'm not going to tell you. There are a lot more important things than wondering what the K stands for, and that's why you're here. Close your eyes, count to ten, and open them again. Milo did. Wasn't that a lot more important than wondering what the K stands for? Of course. Now, here are your instructions for the first day. When you finish reading this, get a stalk of broccoli and tie a loop of string around the end. Leave it in your bedroom overnight. When you're all dressed tomorrow morning, put the string around your neck and wear the broccoli like a necklace. And don't take it off until I tell you to. See you tomorrow. Milo couldn't believe his eyes. He turned the page. Well, don't just sit there and stare. Go get the broccoli. And don't turn any more pages. Shut the book this instant. Milo obeyed. He set the book down on his desk and looked at the picture of Dr. Silverfish. It was hard to tell because the doctor's hot dog blocked off his expression, but Milo thought the doctor might possibly be smirking at him. What does smirking mean? See if you can think of what that might mean. Maybe make a face that would be like a smirk when, when of the way that Dr. Silverfish is thinking about Milo right now. 
Milo didn't think about it very long, though. What he had to do now was find some broccoli. He went down to the kitchen and opened the freezer. Underneath a bowl of fake whip, behind a bag of instant waffles, he found what he was looking for. Broccoli, read the package, in a delicious imitation cheese sauce made only from the finest, most succulent chemicals. Dr. Silverfish hadn't said anything about imitation cheese sauce, but it was liable to be messy when it thawed out. Milo closed the freezer and opened the refrigerator. He was in luck. There in the crisper, right next to a plastic bag of carrots with a bucktooth bunny on it, was a huge stalk of broccoli. Milo wondered whether he should take it without mentioning it to somebody. Normally, his parents didn't mind his taking things from the fridge, but usually what he took was milk or pie or pop or something. Vegetables were a different story. Milo couldn't remember taking a single vegetable out of the refrigerator unless pickles and olives counted. He figured he'd better ask just to be on the safe side. Milo went to the living room where his parents were watching the news. Mom? Hmm? Do you mind if I borrow some broccoli for a while? His mother shook her head. Milo wasn't sure if it meant she didn't mind or if she wanted him to be quiet so she could hear about the gorilla war at the zoo. But he decided it probably didn't matter much one way or the other. He took the broccoli upstairs along with, a, with some string. Milo had a hard time keeping his mind on anything but broccoli the rest of the evening. He wondered how in the world wearing a stalk of broccoli around his neck could possibly help make him perfect. And he was half tempted to peek in Dr. Silverfish's book and try to find out. But he figured the doctor would probably outsmart him somehow, so he didn't bother. He'd been outsmarted once too often. Maybe that was part of the secret of being perfect. Milo thought, not letting people like Dr. Silver, Silverfish outsmart you. Well, he'd find out soon enough. Maybe. That night, Milo dreamed about being perfect. He was sitting on top of a huge piece of broccoli. A halo of green light surrounded him as he smiled down at all the imperfect people in the world and laughed at their mistakes. His sister bumped into the broccoli stalk and stubbed her toe, and Milo laughed and laughed. Do you think that's perfect to laugh at someone when they get hurt? I don't. His mother locked her keys in the car, and Milo howled. His father dropped a big bag of groceries, and Milo roared. In fact, he felt, laughed so hard he fell out of broccoli, or rather, bed. This is a very silly story. Wonder what will happen in the next chapter with the broccoli.